Okay, so there's been a long queue of videos leading up to this one, but this is uh, one that I particularly want to touch on. Um, just before I get into the main subject of the video, I've just had a shot on LBC Radio. My first time ever, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, presented by Matthew Stadlin and um, Matt Stadlin, I should say. And I was bringing up the issue of, um, as other callers had phoned in, about whether we'd be seeing Shamina Begum in a different light if she was white. Um, and I was debating with a woman from Greenwich, and she claimed if the if Shamina Begum had blonde hair, hair and blue eyes, um, we'd be seeing her in a different way. Uh, I don't think that's the case, because I think there's just as much revulsion against white converts. Um, and there's plenty of examples of that. So if you happen to be listening to the LBC radio this morning, the 23rd of February 2019, you may have heard me. Um, I'm happy it was pretty easy to get through to that, and uh, I think I'll do it again. I like LBC Radio. I think it's it's good balanced um, forum that has, uh, you know, you have left and right because, um, yeah. Anyway, to get into the main point of the video, um, I want to talk about the split. The, the seven... Uh, the Gang of Seven, as they're being called. Um, this is a very big political development, and I think there's a lot of angles to take with it. So first of all, let's start with the basics. Who are they? Um, well, just going by the Daily Telegraph here, this is what we know about these seven Labour MPs who have quit the party. And they've subsequently, so they've joined this independent group, and subsequently several other MPs have... Um, broke away from their respective parties. Both Labour and the Tories have lost MPs, but some of them aren't necessarily joining the independent group, so they're independent of the independents. Um, so this is a very, uh, very dramatic political development. So these are the seven MPs. Anne Kofi, she represents Stockport. Um, Angela Smith of Penniston and Stocksbridge. Chris Leslie, who's a former Shadow Chancellor, he represents Nottingham East, or rather, I should say, the, the MP for the state. Uh, Mike Gaps, Ilford South, um, I think it's fair to say a respected MP. Uh, Luciana Berger, Liverpool Wavertree, who's notable for coming under particular anti-Semitic abuse. Gavin Sugar of Luton South, and Chaka Umuna, who I don't think needs an introduction of Streffen. I've been looking at their Facebook pages. Amuna has by far the most number of followers. And the responses tend to be mixed between vitriolic attacks and support. And that tends to be the reaction in general. Um, obviously, there's analogies with this and the SDP split from Labour in the late 80s, which of course ultimately paved way to the Liberal Democrats. Vince Cable um, has said that he's going to be um, open to working closely with this group, um, but wouldn't be, I think, as he put it, consumed by the group. The question is, what happens next? Their reasons for quitting Labour, um, there's multiple reasons, but two of the reasons that come up consistently is the anti-Semitism issue and their lack of confidence in Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. Those are issues that come up uh, with all seven MPs. Those issues have come up. And the others that have subsequently quit, even though they're not joining this group, they have echoed similar sentiments. Like I say, with each specific MP, there's, um, there's other angles, but they all seem to echo roughly those points. Now, another significant factor is they are all Remainers and they all want the people's vote. That, I think, is going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Um, with particularly in places like where I live in Sunderland, where there's a lot of Euroscepticism, and I imagine in a lot of their seats too. Um, John McDonnell has said they should do the decent thing and call by-elections. It's difficult to argue against that point. I mean, they, they were elected as Labour candidates. So suppose you could argue they've let down their constituents, they've betrayed their constituents by resigning as Labour MPs. Um, and the only power that the voters really have is to vote them out of office at the next election, would it be 2020 or 2021? Um, 
I suppose, I mean, they might be thinking if, if by elections are call, called, we lose our seats. Here's my take. Um, the responses, I think, say it all. I mean, you have to see the irony in the fact that they have cited anti-Semitism as one of the reasons, virulent anti-Semitism as one of the reasons why they're quitting Labour. And what do Corbyn's minions come out and say? Oh, they're funded by Israel. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. That, that's a response. So in other words, the response to charges of anti-Semitism is to promote this notion of, oh, they're controlled by the Jewish state, which is itself a anti-Semitic diatribe. Um, I mean, there's zero evidence that they've got funding from Israel, zero evidence. Um, but this is some of the responses that Corbynites have been coming out with. Young Labour UK, the youth wing of the Labour Party, quoted the lyrics of the red flag. Low cards flinch and traitors sneer. We'll keep the red flag flying here. Supporters of Mr Corbyn reacted with fury on social media, with one claiming that the departing MPs worked for Israel and that he's not the only person to do that. Others said good riddance, good riddance to trash and called them Blairite Tory parasites. Um... Jeremy Corbyn and leading Labour figures have been more diplomatic in how they've responded to this. Uh, Corbyn said, I think he was referring to, um, it was either Mike Gapes or um, Chris Leslie, that he was elected on a Labour manifesto, as was I. There is an argument to be made that they are, in a sense, betraying their constituents. But here's the thing. If they have found it so difficult to work under a Corbyn leadership... I mean, bear in mind, they're the ones that have to canvas on a Labour programme when there is so much unease in this country about Jeremy Corbyn's lead, a potential Jeremy Corbyn premiership. I mean, he cannot be trusted with national security. And now they're talking about bringing back Derek Hatton, who was the um, deputy leader of the Labour Council in Liverpool, which... Uh, turned into the militant faction, which was a militant faction, and that led to the failure of the Kinnock, um, of Kinnock getting into a Labour government. Um, and even George Galloway, there's been rumours that George Galloway is going to come back. Now, George Galloway, and I should emphasise that's rumours, but if George Gall Galloway is readmitted to the Labour Party, that to me would be the icing on the cake, because... Look at Galloway's record. He's praised Saddam Hussein. He's a pathological liar. He um, panders to Russian state media. He constantly churns out anti-British propaganda and conspiracy theories. I mean, he is a personification of a traitor if ever there was one. Um, so if Labour readmit the likes of Galloway, that will really say it all. And, you know, I was of the school of thought of OK, well, there's all these anti-Semitic claims. Um, there needs to be due process. They need to be proven. Well, I came across a very long list the other night that was provided on a debate forum of the number of anti-Semitic incidents that have gone on within the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn has done too little too late. Sure, he's condemned it. But this is an example of, I mean, the sort of whataboutery that Labour always resort to. John McDonnell was saying that Britons who go to join the IDF should be stripped of their citizenship in relation to the Begum case. That's the most pathetic what about me. Um, because for one, Israel is not an existential threat to the United Kingdom. Now, you could make a, a generic case people shouldn't join the armed forces of, of another country. But I think that should be assessed on our relations with that country. And Israel is clearly not an enemy of the United Kingdom just like if they joined the Canadian Armed Forces or the American Armed Forces. If they joined the Russian Armed Forces, that would be a very different matter. I would consider that an act of treason, given just how woefully bad our relations with Russia are right, are right now. In terms of what direction these MPs take, um, it's difficult to know, because are they going to run... I mean, as it stands, this independent group is not a political party. And if it stays that way, it's only going to attract cynicism and people will say, essentially, it's a private company and 
I, I think they're going to have to form some sort of centrist party. Uh, I mean, Tony Blair has definitely alluded to this. And personally, a new political party led by Tony Blair, I, I definitely give it the time of day. It's not that I agree with everything Blair done as prime minister, but one thing you can be damn sure of is that Tony Blair was not a threat to national security in the way that Jeremy Corbyn is. I mean, Tony Blair will never be prime minister again. I don't think he should be, but I think there is a very strong case in this country for a strong centrist movement. Now, I want to be very clear here. I don't see centrism as without flaws. I mean, one problem I have with a lot of centrists, one problem, I'll, I'll use the Liberal Democrats as an example. They're a centre-left political party. The big issue I have with the Lib Dems is they're completely weak on crime. Well, okay, that's a left-wing issue, but they're very weak on Islamism. I think they should be on the forefront of condemning pan-Islamist terror, and they're not. I have a big problem with that. I also think too many centrists pander to identity politics. And that's something I have a very big problem with. So that's why I don't necessarily endorse. Well, it's why I don't endorse the Lib Dems and it's why I don't endorse a lot of centrist figures. It's one of the main reasons um, why I was wary of a Clinton presidency, Hillary Clinton presidency, and not to go off on a tangent. But what I really resent is this idea that if you are not a hard left socialist, or a hard right conservative, then you don't believe in anything, that you have no principles. Um, you know, that is such a crap, to be quite honest. Because it's pigeonholing people into saying that you either have to be a red flag flying socialist or a true blue Tory. You're a skeptic, otherwise, you don't believe in anything. That's utter crap. I believe in what I believe, and I believe in certain things very, very passionately. But I, I just think it's astonishing that when, for example, Luciana Berger cites virulent anti-Semitism as one of the reasons she left, the response to that is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Oh, they're all funded by Israel. They may as well just say it's the Jewish media or other anti-Semitic tropes. I think there is a very real problem within Labour, and I think this is partly because for the last 30 years, the Labour Party has been pandering to um, to a Muslim constituency, and this is not to generalise all Muslims, but to a left-wing Muslim constituency that is very pro-Palestine. And the thing about critique of Israel, I have never said, and I would never support the idea that Israel is above criticism, and I don't believe that criticizing Israel in itself is anti-Semitic. That's not anti-Semitic. But very often anti-Israel sentiments do morph into anti-Jewish sentiments. You just need to dig beneath the surface to see that. And the retort there would be, oh, well, there's liberal Jews that oppose Israel. There is. But if you look at countries like Turkey, if you look at other parts of the Middle East, the depths of anti-Semitism go right down to the sewers in those countries. And you see that in definitely within factions of the Labour Party and the hard left in this country, where they say they're just against Israel, but they get into anti-Semitic conspiracy theories in spite, if you dig beneath the surface. Um, I mean, Corbyn and McDonnell are you know they're not going to say that publicly and they're going to use all the right lines like oh it's a scourge we're going to tackle it all the rest of it but clearly this is a very big problem now the fact these seven mps are calling for a second referendum that isn't going to endear a lot of support i voted remain and i'm not convinced by a second referendum i think it will create more division also there's many people in the labor party who are not hard left who are centre-left people, and they won't necessarily endorse this because they will say it's only going to aid Theresa May. I'm not sure about that because May is having her own headache. She's also losing MPs. I think what this shows is that both big parties are in a mess at the moment for different reasons. With Labour, it's because Corbyn cannot be trusted with national security and because of the anti-Semitism issue. And with the Tories, it's the Brexit civil war. So both parties 
are really in an identity crisis right now. They're in a complete mess. And the Lib Dems are too weak to um, be a credible alternative. The Green Party don't believe in the United Kingdom and they are basically pretty hard left disguising themselves as just about all environmental issues. Um, and the SNP is a separatist party that doesn't believe in this country. And UKIP is a single issue party. It's the Brexit party. So it does make you wonder what choices are there. So I would like to see this independent group morph into a new political party and stand on that platform. And maybe that will mean calling by elections. In terms of merging with the Liberal Democrats, um, if the Lib Dems got more MPs, well, the thing is, because of our political system, the Lib Dems have actually suffered from, from the political setup the way it is because there's been situations where they have actually gained votes but lost seats. And I mean, we've had a referendum on AV, but it's going. To, this is a very interesting time. I mean, I do see where these MPs are coming from. Because in the end of the day, they, they're the ones that have to toe the party line. And how can they do that when they don't believe in it? When they do not believe in Corbyn's leadership? It would be an incredibly uncomfortable position. Put it this way, if I was an MP and I had to campaign under a leader who I believe was dead wrong on a wide range of issues and who I felt was heading the down a very dangerous path who I didn't trust on national security. How could I be straight faced and say that to a constituent or vote for my party? So from that point of view, they're being true to their constituents in the sense that they feel they would be disingenuous. However, it's difficult to argue against them calling it by election. So anyway, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, So I, I don't know a great deal about all these MPs. Probably Amuna is the best known. With Chaka Amuna, I think he's a, a very smart guy. He's very smooth. Um, I think there has been times he's pandered to virtue signaling and identity politics. I remember once he um, uh, came out to attack Johnson on the burqa issue. I wasn't happy about that. I don't think any MP should be cheerleading the burqa. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll just watch developments and see what happens. I do think there's a very strong case for a strong centrist movement in this country, but I don't think they should pitch on demanding a second referendum because a second referendum will only galvanise the Scottish nationalists. They will then say, oh, we should get a second referendum and we'll end up with no United Kingdom. So, or potentially not. So it's going to be interesting to see what develops with this. Uh, as for being cards and parasite Tory traitors, great way, Labour youth, to make yourselves look like the ni nice party, you know. Great way to show that you're not a bunch of um, far-left bullies. Because all you're doing with that sort of vitriol is proving their points.